Welcome back to the Unreal for Unity Developers tutorial series. In this video, we're going to do more of a follow along type thing. We're going to jump in Unreal and and build something. Now, there's going to be a ton of things that get glossed over in the process. So just disregard them. Just uh, just basically follow along and you know run through the motions of doing what I do. And we'll actually get into explaining the whys later on. Now, some of the things in here we'll we'll start to uh, we'll start to get into, but a good portion of it is going to be beyond the scope of this video. So we're just going to more jump in and start to build the muscle memory and have some fun. So hopefully you've install, installed Unreal by now. Just jump into the library tab, and oh, this is perfect. So you can see right here, there's a little I next to the engine version, and that's letting you know that there's an update available. We're going to skip the update for the time being, and just launch. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with one of the built-in templates that Unreal provides. And these things provide super nice starting point for you know lots of different types of projects. So hit the new project tab over here and you'll see that uh, these are all of the different templates available just like uh, we saw last time. And we'll just jump in and use the third person. And uh, you can leave all of these as the default. We're not going to need the starter content, so we don't need to worry about that. You can actually pull the starter content in at a later date as well. So uh, I'll show you how to do that when the time comes. So just give your project a meaningful name, like my project, and jump on in. All right, so here we are in the third person demo project. and. We can push play here and just have a look at what we got. So you can move around with the mouse, your view, and then you have WASD to actually make your character run. And space will jump. So you can see Unreal provides a nice little base here with all the animations ready to roll and uh, a really detailed environment for us to play with. Okay, so let's jump over into the content folder here in the content browser. And just follow along. Again, if you don't fully understand what we're doing, that's completely fine. You shouldn't. We're just going to start building up the muscle memory. And eventually, this will all be second nature. And we'll also get into the details of, of why and uh, why we're doing certain things as time goes on. But there's no reason to overwhelm yourself with that right now. For now, let's just uh, jump in, make something, and have some fun. So right-click here. Or you could also use the add new button and what we're going to want to do is create a blueprint class so what this is going to do is it's going to pop up a parent class picker so this is going to be one of the the first differences here between a unity prefab and an unreal blueprint unreal's blueprints can actually uh, they're based on a, a different parent class because they are just a class themselves so unity Prefabs are just an amalgamation of objects. It's just you know a bunch of you know a few different game objects. You drag them from your scene view to your projects panel, and it just stores that wad of game objects. Unreal will give us a lot more power with the blueprint system. So for this particular case, we're just going to use actor. So uh, remember before we have these little question marks here that we can click on to open documentation, and Unreal also has a lot of uh, hover tool tips and you can see this pops up and explains a little bit about the actor and you can also push control alt sometimes and get a little bit more information this particular case you end up with uh, less information but uh, that's besides the point so uh, an actor is the, the the root class for anything that can be placed in the scene so we're going to want to we're going to be uh, making a jump pad here so we need it to be placed in the scene so we're going to want to go with actor as our base class so you'll see we jump right in here and it's giving us the ability to name it so we'll just call this BP Launchpad and we're just gonna follow along with uh, with Epic's conventions here uh, they name all of their blueprints uh, BP underscore they're basically just different prefixes for the file names on uh, on different things that they created for organization it's not entirely required especially with something as powerful as the filters where you can just filter and look at only your blueprint classes by just checking a box, but we'll follow along anyway. So double click the BP Launchpad to open it up. And okay, so 
you can see here we have a floating window. Uh, now Unreal uh, basically works a lot like a, a web browser in different way in in some ways where uh, you have a tab system where you can either um, have your tabs all be in the same window or you can have separate windows for everything you, know, you can basically do things how you want so uh, another important aspect of Unreal is they actually have editors for a lot of different things so uh, you know, we'll see this more and more. Right now we're just, we're seeing that by double clicking this, we have a separate editor for our blueprints. So this would essentially be equivalent to Unity having a prefab viewer and editor. Um, you know, of course, Unity doesn't have that. If you wanna edit a prefab, you basically have to drag it into your scene and edit it and then click the apply button. Okay, so jumping in here, there's gonna be a lot of stuff. It's pretty overwhelming, but just focus on, on only the things that we're going we're doing in the video this particular time and we'll slowly build up our knowledge about everything so what we have here is uh, basically like a little mini scene view and you can see there's a little circle here which is just representing the that this isn't actually a mesh this is just representing the object there's no actual rendered object here in this so this is where we get to actually build up our blueprint our prefab so we can add different things to this like meshes and skeletal meshes and pretty much anything any component can be added in here in this particular case we'll just uh, click the add component button and you can either scroll through this list and look for it or you can just type in cylinder and if you want to um, you know read through this list just to see what's built into unreal definitely recommended but uh we're gonna jump straight to adding a cylinder in here and you see we end up with a cylinder. So what you see over here is the, the outline and this is showing the different objects that we have in our viewport uh, in this, this blueprint. And in this particular case, we have a default scene route, which is, uh, is basically nothing. It's just a placeholder object in a way. And then we have the cylinder. So if we remember, Unreal lets us have different components with different parents so there's a there's a hierarchy system built into the components not just with game objects as there is in unity so that's what this is basically showing us here so you don't have to follow along for this part but just as an example if we wanted to add a point light you can see that we now have this point light see this uh this is just representing the radius of the point light now if we move the point light around it, it moves the point light itself but if we go ahead and hop over here and choose the cylinder, you can see that the point light's right here and it's not moving. Now, if we take that point light and drag it onto the cylinder, we just parented it to the cylinder. So now when we move the cylinder, you can see we're moving the point light also. So this is just showing you that the components themselves can be parented with each other. Let's get rid of that. Let's take our cylinder and Let's make it a little bit more appropriately sized. Right now it's uh, it's kind of huge. So we could come over into our scale settings here and drop this down on the Z axis a bit, like maybe 0.2. Uh, so I'm gonna click the compile button up here and you can see there's, there's two main buttons you're gonna be using up here in the toolbar. Uh, compile will actually compile the blueprint itself. Now we haven't actually added any blueprint script, so uh, it's it's for that for this particular case it's just going to end up taking any changes we made and committing them you notice how I just moved this and the compile got and turned into a question mark letting you know it's dirty uh, okay so now that we have that I'm going to go back over to the actual map itself and let's just take that BP launch pad and drag it into the scene so you can see we actually have our little launch pad in the scene there ready to go and it's uh, it's a little small, so we'll make it a little bit bigger. So jumping over here again, maybe we'll go with uh, 0.3. So we compile that and we look over here and the changes are immediately present. Okay, so we have a visual representation of the jump pad. Now, of course, in a real game, you'd want something a little bit uh, prettier than this. You know, maybe add some particle effects, glow, whatever. Now there's a couple little properties we're gonna wanna change on this. So right now, as is, this object is actually going to uh, have blocking collision. So if we drag it up here, we'll see that we can't actually run into it. So for a jump pad, we don't really want this to have any collision. So we'll go ahead and 
modify that property here. So if you look over, if we make sure the cylinder is selected and look through our details panel, you're going to want to find the collision section. So if we scroll down, here's our collision section. So there's various collision presets. Now these collision presets are just like Unities. And I'm going to actually open this up so you can see. So we have like a collision matrix. It's very, very much like Unity. So if you've ever seen the physics properties panel in Unity, you'll be instantly comfortable here. Now for this particular case, we don't actually need to dive in and actually change the details in here. We just want this to not actually block the player at all. So there's already a preset for that. It's called no collision. So if we jump back over here, and run into this now, you'll see we can just walk right through it. And that's exactly what we want. The next little bit that we're gonna need here is uh, we're actually gonna need a, a way to tell when the player enters onto the jump pad. And this is done a lot like Unity. So what we're gonna do is just add a component. And what we're looking for here is uh, is we want some type of, uh, of trigger volume. And for this particular case, we can just use a box. And you'll see because I had the cylinder selected, the box was added as a child of it, and that's exactly what we want. So what we're gonna do is just get in a slightly better view. And if you uh, if you don't recall from the last video, you can move around the scene exactly how you can with in Unity. Just hold down uh, your mouse button and use WASD, and then Q and E for uh, for six axis move movement. So what we're gonna do over here is just change the box extent. So we're basically just wanna want to bump the size up a bit on this so that it's a little bit bigger than the visual representation. That way it's uh, it's easier for the for the player to hit. So we're going to go with about 60 on uh, X and Y. And then if we jump over here, we can see we're a little bit uh, too small in the Z. So let's bump that up a bit. Something about there is good. So 60, 60, and about 65. And that right there is going to be what we use to detect when the player enters it, to launch them into the air. So because we actually want to use this uh, as a trigger, we're going to want to change the physics properties, or the collision properties, so that it actually acts like a trigger. So if we go down to our collision section here, right now we have a collision preset of overlap all dynamic, which will block the player. So what we want to do is use this trigger setting here. So this will end up making the object work just as if you, you put the is trigger flag in a Unity Collider. So now that we have that all set, let's just give it a quick test and make sure we can still run through this. And we can. Perfect. Okay, so now we get into the fun stuff. We're actually going to jump into the Blueprint Visual Scripting language. Up here, what you can see, we have a few different tabs. The viewport is what we've been in where we get to see our little mini scene view and change the, the actual physical hierarchy of our components. The construction script and the event graph are where we actually use the blueprint scripting itself. Now the construction script we're not going to need for this so we can just close that for now. And the event graph is uh, this is basically equivalent to to you opening up your mono behavior subclass in Unity. So you're going to have begin play already here for you. And that's just like start. You have the tick event here, which is basically just like Unity's update. And you can see we already have this other event, actor begin overlap in here. So let's just delete these other ones. We don't really need these. But overlap sounds interesting. That sounds like something we might actually need here because we do want to know when the player enters into this particular actor. With the visual scripting system, there's a, a ton of things you can do. I mean, this has a, basically pulls in, uh, gives you the ability to do just about everything you can do with code. Again, we're not going to deep dive into this. So just do as I do in this video, and we'll actually get into explaining more of the intricacies later. In the visual scripting world, everything is connected via different nodes. So this particular node is, uh, is a special type of node, and it's basically uh, an event node is something that the engine will call at the appropriate time in this particular case when begin overlap happens. So if we take this little white arrow here, we can drag this out and this lets us connect one node to another node. When we drag this out, we get a little box here and this is showing all of the different 
things that we can do, all of the different nodes that we can connect this to. And there's just tons and tons and tons of stuff in here. It's overwhelming. So right now, just for this particular case, just, uh, just type in print and you'll see here we'll have a print string option. So let's just add this print string option. What this is, is it lets us print a debug string. And the debug string will not only print in the log, but it'll also print right on screen. So we have a super quick way to test this. So we can jump right in here and let's just go ahead and run on here. And you can see right up in the top left-hand corner, you see the word hello popping up every time we pop into here. So every time we overlap this launch pad, we're getting a little string printed up there. So this is exactly what we're looking for. This, this is precisely it. We know when we have entered into that trigger. So that's fantastic. Now, what we wanna do here is when the overlap happens, we just wanna make sure that what actually overlapped us, us being the launch pad, we wanna make sure that that is actually the player itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag a new node in over here and we're going to type in cast to character and you can see cast to character here this is what we want and just briefly what this is is we're basically saying when something overlaps us let's just cast that thing to character and character happens to be what our main little dude is here so this uh the, the unreal mannequin he he's actually a character so we're going to cast a character and then we have two different options here we have cast failed and right here would be if the cast succeeded so if the cast succeeded we have a character at that point so we can do different things to the character let's drag off now instead of dragging off from here like we did before Let's try dragging off from here and see what happens. So this is as character. So what this is doing is once we have cast it to character, this is giving us the reference to the character. Type in the word launch at this point and you'll see we have launch character here. What we're gonna do is just pop in a value here like uh, maybe 800. We want this to be uh, Z override true. Just explaining what this is real quick. So this is saying if the cast is successful, go on to the next node. If the cast fails, don't do anything. We don't care if the cast fails. You know, that could be if, like, say, a bullet, for example, uh, bounced into there, into the launch pad. We don't really care, because uh, so we could just ignore it. So if we're successful, take the character itself and launch the character. We're going to launch on the Z-axis. Now, in, in Unreal, X and Y are make up the ground plane, and Z is, uh, is up and down. We're just going to check the Z override. The reason why is because when we hit this launch pad, we just want to make sure that we're always launching at 800. So that's what Z override does. Z override is basically saying when you hit this and you launch and you're launching with a Z of 800, just set the character's movement speed to 800, no matter what. So if the character's falling, for example, at 800 centimeters a second, if we were to not have Z override checked, when we then tried to add 800, we would end up just being at zero. So we wouldn't actually end up bouncing off of the launch pad. We would end up just stopping. So by doing a Z override, we're gonna make sure that we are shooting the character up at 800 centimeters a second. So let's go ahead and compile that. And you can see we have no errors. We got the little green check mark. So we can push the play button and this will launch our little standalone. And now we can run over here and you can see the launch pad works. So as soon as we enter in there, it's it knows that we're a character and it launches us. So that's it for this tutorial. There was a ton of different systems that we went on and we just glossed over all of them, but we got to jump in here and we got to make our first blueprint. We got to put together a couple objects. We got to add our first blueprint visual scripting. So all of this is gonna to start to build up your, your memory, your muscle memory. You're just gonna get more and more familiar with it over time. So even if you just do it and don't understand what you're doing right now, We'll get into details and it'll all become second nature eventually. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.